celebration indeed, because seven years ago today, the voters passed and we got the roads to prosperity going. Let me tell you how it happened. When the governor first took office, he came to highways and he said, I want the roads fixed. I want to build new roads. I want the roads fixed. And the answer was, the reply was, well, governor, sir, we just don't have the money. And the response was, and he'll tell you this, I'll fix that. Well, he did. Thus, the roads to prosperity was born. But let me tell you what, why it's so important. An aviation term among pilots, never be without altitude, airspeed, and ideas at the same time. Well, highways, we weren't flying at all. So airspeed had gone to just a mere walk, and we certainly didn't have any ideas. In fact, there was a time about eight years ago, nine years ago, that DOH management in our counties Get this, they would get together and decide which road, singular, which road they were going to pave that season. It's all changed due to roads to prosperity. Again, welcome, it's a celebration, and my honor to welcome Governor Jim Justice. Well, Jimmy, they just gave me one, maybe one of your ties. I don't think it's going to work on me, but it will work on Baby Dog. <laughs> now, let me just tell you, this is phenomenal. And God knows I appreciate you all more than you'll ever know. You know, we have done something that nobody ever dreamed was remotely possible. You know, just think about it. I see our Senate president right there, Craig Blair. I don't know where Roger is, but I'd say he may very well be here somewhere too. But all the great legislature and the great work that we've done, just think, and every last one of you, think what we've done. In all fairness, this day, October the 7th, voters went to the polls and voted. And almost, I mean, you could have, you absolutely, thousands of people came to me along the way and said, there's no way, there's no way they're going to vote to do this. Because they all believed that really the naysayers, that really we were gonna to have to raise taxes, the voters would be concerned and scared, and the voters would say no. And you know what the voters of West Virginia said? By an ungodly margin, almost 73% of the voters said, kiss my butt, you're wrong. That's all there is to it. They said to all the naysayers, Kiss my butt, you're wrong. And then all of a sudden, we took off. They had faith in all of us. They did. They had faith and they believed that absolutely, of all things, and this honors me beyond good sense, but they believed in what I was telling them to be the truth. Now look, I'll make plenty of mistakes. I always have. We all do, but the thing that I've tried to do with all my soul is tell you the truth. Tell you the truth a lot of days that were really tough with COVID. Tell you the truth and absolutely tell you what I believed with all my soul we could do and look at you. And I wanna make sure that I get every single one of these things right, but I think what has happened here is there is 1,320 of you with the reflector vest and everything on, and that represents the number of total projects that were on the books and absolutely would know where to go, had maybe been there for decades and decades and decades, 1,320 and that's what this is right here. 
1300 I had no clue you were doing this. Honest to goodness, I love it. I mean, we have had the opportunity to come here and be and, and announce what we were going to do with broadband. We've had the opportunity to come here and ring that incredible bell and everything and just say, you know, we are, we are making notice to a great individual, Martin Luther King. And absolutely, we have been here doing all kinds of things. But with all that being said, I know if you look behind me, the view and this incredible capital is absolutely spectacular beyond belief. But we've not been here ever, ever with something like this right here. Absolutely. I don't know how it gets better. Please give yourself an incredible round of applause. Now think just a second, and please stay with me. 1,320 projects. We have done, we have started, we have begun work on all but 10 of those projects. It is unbelievable what we did. We walked up and put a stake in the sand and said, by God, West Virginia's worth it. And we took off. And absolutely, you can mark it down. And, and, and if you choose to do it, because I'm not going to be your governor forever, but there is no holiday in the state of West Virginia better than October the 7th. On this day, we shook up the blooming world. That's all there is to it. On this day is when it all started. Nobody would have ever, if I could use West Virginia slang, nobody could have ever thunk it. How in the world would you think that all the things that are happening all across the land, whether it be tourism, our parks, everything over and over and over, it all started with today. When Toby and Edith went to the polls and said, kiss my butt, I believe in what we're going to do. 73% of them said they believe, and then we took off. It is an unbelievably beautiful day in this great state. I've said it so many times, and I mean it from the very bottom of my heart. If you'll just step back and think, why did we need to be dead last? When I first ran for governor, I put up signs and said, are you tired of being 50th? Our voters were tired. And they absolutely stepped up with a voice that absolutely is now being heard all over the world. Absolutely, with all in me, if you'll just step back and think, four of the most beautiful seasons on the planet. We abound in natural resources like you can't imagine. We're within a rock's throw of two-thirds of the population of this whole country. And we've got you. You are the treasure of treasures of treasures. Look at you. Look at you right now. What is, what is the fabric in you? It's low crime. It's faith-based. It's good neighbors. It's the people that know the difference between right and wrong, and, it, and not the people that are just trying to, that right and wrong doesn't matter. It's just a matter of what you can get by with. You are so good. It's unbelievable. And we all we had to do was unleash you. Absolutely all we had to do was turn this state and say, let's go. Let's go right now. You've done it. Now listen, you have given me the honor of my life in many, many, many ways. Absolutely, being your governor, I'll never, ever, ever forget it, and I'll treasure it to my grave. Absolutely, I tell you just this, keep it going. Keep it going. Never, ever forget for a second that you need to know your place and your place is last. 
For God's sakes of living, you're the best. You're the absolute best. I love you with all my soul. And I mean that from, with every fabric in me. Absolutely today, October the 7th, in our world, there can never be a day. There will never be a day that is as important as October the 7th. This day, this day took us off. And it took us off like a blooming rocket ship. And don't let anybody ever tell you anything but just that. You know, whether it be education or tourism or parks or on and on and on, today, today is the day that took us off. So with all that being said, and I mean it, I love every single last one of you. I love you from the bottom of my heart because really, you did the work. You pulled the rope. Every last one of you, you absolutely made all this happen. You see, that's the goodness about us. It's not Jim Justice. It's not just a group, a small group of people. It's not just the legislature. It's all of us. With all in me, I thank you. I love you with all my soul. And the last thing I would say is, as bright as today is, today is our promise, our promise that the prosperity has begun and keep it going. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for having me. Let's hear some noise. Let's make it loud for Governor Jim Justice. Come on. <laughs> Governor, just a few minutes. They're going to stand and each are holding a project, 1,320 projects. You'll see it in just a few minutes. Before we do that, though, I'd like to introduce the secretary of the West Virginia Department of Transportation, as well as the Commissioner of Highways. Secretary, Jimmy Riston. Good morning. Thank you all for coming here. The governor just told you what an important day this is. It is indeed maybe the most important milestone in the history of our great state. But I will, I will say this. You have no idea how hard it is to pull something off like this and keeping it from this guy until he got here. It's unbelievably difficult. First, first and foremost, I, if I, there's a whole lot of people here that I can mention, a whole lot of people. And if I sat here and I named everybody that put the licks in, as the governor would say, for the Roads to Prosperity program, I'd be here all day and about half the night. But there's a, I want to welcome our contracting partners. Thank you for coming, Jason, bringing some folks. And our uh, Mike Clouser, thanks, thanks for the ACEC and our uh, consulting partners. And Governor, your Department of Transportation. When Secretary White showed up over there, day one, he didn't know anybody. I, I sat down and had a meeting with the governor, and we, we talked about exactly what we've been talking about for eight years now. Because when you talk about transportation in West Virginia, you're talking about the Roads to Trans Prosperity program. Governor, I guess we could say in your, in your language, we done done it. <laughs> but Bird showed up over there, and we talked about it. And I'll tell you, this is a well, not a well-known fact, but the program was off, off the tracks. <laughs> program was well off the tracks. Secretary White and I sat down and we put it back on the tracks. We put it back on the tracks by taking care of a lot of that back office stuff that nobody had paid attention to for decades and decades. We were so worried about falling behind on our infrastructure because we underinvested in our infrastructure for decades and decades. The big bold vision of Governor Justice took care of that. That got us on that launch pad for the rocket ship. Secretary White and I sat down and we mapped this out. We mapped it out all the way up to today, to today and the celebration that we're having now. But none of that would have made any difference if it wasn't for all these folks out here in these, in these best. Every one of you played a part. Every one of you. You've heard me say it a thousand, a thousand times. Every staff meeting, every time I've been talking to you, we're all connected. That's, that's the message the governor gave us. We're all connected. We pull the rope in the same direction, and the connections just get that much tighter. They get that much stronger. And then you accomplish great, great things. 
The great, great things we've accomplished is we've, we trusted our people. The governor gave them the message and they trusted him. They trusted him to vote the right way. And they did. And now they're reaping the rewards. They're getting the return on that investment when they cast that vote for the Roads of Prosperity program. So today, October 7th, should be celebrated each and every year throughout the annals of West Virginia history simply because this turned this state around. Not only did it revitalize our Department of Transportation, and you've all reaped the rewards of that, you've all seen the return on your investment for that, but it has benefited the entire state by touching every life, every West Virginia citizen in this state. I'm going to close just for a moment, though, but I do have something that I'd like to, I'd like to show the governor that uh, some very special people has been working on. But just, just one second, I do have to mention, uh, it was really hard to keep this from you, governor, but, uh, but I had two aces in the hole. Uh, Sasha, where are you? There you are. Where's Lori? That Lori. Those two right there, you talk about superstars, governor. Superstars beyond superstars. They did all the heavy lifting. They're why we're here today. Thank you. Everybody give them a hand. Right, there are two other people that I want to mention, and I'm not leaving anybody out because I'm going to tell you, each and every one of you has played a role in this program, and it's been vital. We couldn't have done it without every single one of you. Every single one of you. But, uh, but I do have to mention Deputy Secretary Elena Keller. And Lori Hodges, that I couldn't even function without her. So, Governor, I'm going to show you this. This is, uh, this is something that we've worked on. My, uh, my communications folks worked on it. This, uh, this is really special to me. I had a vision, too, there a little while back. So this is the culmination of that vision. Y'all just sit there. I'm going to read this whole book. <laughs> Come here and let me give you a hug. What I just presented to the governor is a coffee table book. It's uh, Jennifer Dooley and her team put this together. It's called the Transportation or the Transformation of Transportation, the Roads to Prosperity Program. This is a, uh, a historical representative of the projects that we worked on, some narrative about it, uh, a lot of stuff about the effects of that program has had on the entire state. And it's, uh, it, it's a picture book, it's a coffee table book, but there's a lot of information in it that really outlines what we have been living together. Everybody here in, this, in these vests, what we've been living together for the last eight years. Thank you, Governor, we, your vision we done done it. Thank you. You know, we've talked about partners. We've talked about partners a lot during the last eight years. The governor put a great team together around him in the office, all the cabinet secretaries. We work together each and every day, each and every day. We work together when one of us has a talent or one of us has a resource that the other doesn't have. Well, they have it too. And we talk to each other. We communicate to each other. We help each other. One of those partners is behind me today, maybe the most prominent partner, because when the governor said it wants transportation to lead the way, Chelsea was right there beside us to lead the way and to make the same kind of investments in tourism that we've seen made possible by getting access to this great state through the Roads to Prosperity. So without, uh, without saying anything else, I'd like to introduce to you Cabinet Secretary Chelsea Ruby. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, it has been an ab absolute privilege over the last seven years to work with the Department of Transportation. Um, you know, when I first started this job, I had no idea how much I would work with all of you. And I have to say that over the years, transportation has become our biggest partner. So it started out in the beginning 
I made a lot of phone calls to Jimmy even before he was secretary with, there's an issue on this road or that road, or we've got this tourism business that's, you know, really hard to access. And a lot of it in the beginning was negative. It was because things hadn't been maintained. You all didn't have the resources. Projects were behind. But through all that, Jimmy and I really got to know each other. Um, and that dynamic has changed. Each year, West Virginia welcomes 75 million visitors to the state. And each and every one of those 75 million visitors is driving. And like I said, it used to be that our communications focused on issues, needing to fix potholes and whatnot. But today, that communication is very different. Today, what I'm working with all of you on is big projects. It's actually promoting our roads. So back in May of 2022, we started the West Virginia Mountain Rides program. You all know what that is, but for those of you who might not, what it is is a program that recognizes the great work that has been done on the roads and the incredible roads that we have here in West Virginia, those country roads that have made us famous. And while that may not seem significant, if you really stop and think about it, it is. It used to be that eight years ago, the thing everybody was complaining about are the roads, and today, we celebrate those roads. We advertise those roads. They are a key component of our tourism marketing strategy. So if I think back to the governor's inauguration, I remember sitting on the other side on the steps, and it was very, very cold. And the governor focused much of his address on two things, tourism and roads. He talked about how on the tourism side, why would anyone want to go to Michigan? And on the road side, he talked about how there were potholes everywhere. And I know a lot of us sat there with knots in our stomachs thinking about how were we going to accomplish what he wanted us to accomplish. I know I did. I was thinking, how can I take West Virginia and get it higher than Michigan on all the scales? And we've done that. And y'all have done that too. So, Governor, I want to give you um, a huge deal of gratitude for that vision. Uh, like I said, years ago, we didn't quite understand it, and we certainly didn't know how you were going to get us here today. But it's incredible to see these incredible investments that we've made into infrastructure, both on the tourism and the transportation side, and the payoff that we're getting. So travelers in our state are spending nearly $9 billion. That's the economic impact each year. And that's because of all of you. So thank you all for making that possible. Thank you for making us one of the states with the highest return visitation rates. And thank you for making us a state where we celebrate our roads. And Governor. Thanks to you for figuring out how to do it all and pushing us and pushing us and making this a reality. So I'll turn it back over to the governor. But again, you all have really made us shine and have made West Virginia a world-class tourism destination. Thank you. Well, first of all, and let me say this very sincerely to all of you. I'll never forget today. I'll never, ever, ever be able to repay you for just what you've done for the last X number of years. And I'll never be able to repay you for, the de for today. Look at this incredible weather. Look at what we have in the state of West Virginia. And let me tell you this. In this part, you can block out. But honest and true, as I can tell you, when all of a sudden they hand you a set of books, and the books really are bad, there's nowhere to turn. You ask over and over, well, do you have a rainy day fund? Just the, just the absolute questions that would immediately come to your mind. And they say, or your revenue people say, no. Nope, Governor, we can't do that. We've already done that the last couple of years, and we've drained our rainy day fund to the point in time when really and truly our bonds are going to be de derated. With all that being said, you keep trying so hard to come up with an idea. What are we going to do? And this is the part you need to block out of your mind. I'm in the shower. Now block that out. And it just hit me like a lot of blessing ideas that I believe absolutely come from the good Lord. 
And that was just this, is the concept of what would it cost us? What would it cost us if every living, breathing human in West Virginia, what would it cost us to do what we're doing right here? Let every road job that we even thought about on the books, let them all. And not only that, fix all the roads and do all the stuff. What would it cost us to do? And then that's where it all started. And then basically you have a dream. But where I'm going with all this is just this. God above, above blesses this state and each and every one of you every single day. Now, I know there's tough stuff. And I know there's really tough days. And a lot of days it's not very fair in all of our lives. But I would tell you, West Virginia is blessed and is blessed by God above so many times all every single day. And you should remember that. From my standpoint, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Of my heart. I'm not smart enough to have just come up with this idea. There's no way. There's no way. This idea was the blessing from God above. And for that, for that very reason, we should always remember and celebrate today. Today has absolutely started West Virginia on a pathway that is unbelievable. I say it over and over and over. But Aunt Edith wants to have a picnic this Sunday. This Sunday, she wants to have a picnic. And a few Sundays back, she wanted to have that picnic. And really and truly, then she decides, well, you know, my grandkids are in Charlotte and Atlanta and Denver. I want to see my grandbabies. I want them to have an opportunity in West Virginia. That's what this day is all about. Aunt Edith is going to have, have a whole lot, a whole lot of wonderful picnics, and her grandbabies are going to be here. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much. You made it happen. I love you with all my soul, and I'll never forget many things, but especially today. Thank you. Nice round of applause for Governor Jim Justice, everyone. Today is the seventh celebration of Roads to Prosperity, you all. I'm going to ask you to stand and hold your Roads to Prosperity project as we get that all-important photo. Randy? Good Lord, I got to turn around.